Hey guys, I'm Scott Clifton. Welcome to Saxon 7.6. This is like pre-pre-algebra. And uh, just a couple of things to intro before we start off this year. First off, if you're new to Saxon, you're in for a treat. John Saxon was a great guy. Um, he made this, he actually uh, made this math series and system mortgaged his house actually to to test out this idea and he was very successful the success in saxon is basically <clears throat> that you do things over and over until you like you learn you it's like oh i just started learning this i oh i'm gonna do it for months i think i got it okay i understand it all now then you just keep over learning it and that between oh i got it and I'm, oh this i already know this why am i doing this that's where you learn it permanently that's why you do your times tables over and over and over learn that as well um Make sure you get this one, Saxon 7.6, the fourth edition. You might also want to get the solutions manual. That's the answer key with problems worked out so you now know how they work them out. It's very helpful. Um, th that's the Saxon method is over learning and repetition and doing it over and over. You might be at like less than 50 or something like that doing a problem set. And you're only going to do one or two or maybe three problems from that lesson you just learned. The rest of the stuff will be stuff you've done for months before and you're going, man, I already know how to do this stuff. Perfect. That's just what we want. So this is a really critical book in this whole Saxon uh, series and in your math career. You really need to get this down, which will be uh, you'll, very doable You know, if you apply yourself and just work hard and do it. The key is doing those problems every day. Now, don't let yourself... Uh, oh, I'm going to just do the odds, this problem set. No, th th these are all set up very specifically so you don't want to just do the odds, oh, and go to the next lesson. Uh, that's the wrong way to approach it. Now, if you're um, pressed for time one day and you only have time to do, let, let's say, half of them or whatever, make sure you do the odds or the evens. Like if there's 30 problems in this problem set, don't say, oh, I'm going to do 1 through 15. Don't do that. Do either one, three, five, or whatever. Two, four, six, eight. Do do it that way. Because what happens is sometimes cl uh, Saxton clusters these uh, problems types together. So let's say number fifteen and sixteen will be the same type of problem. Well, uh, let me a better example. <laughs> I mean, like problem seven and eight will be the same type of problem. So if you do one through fifteen, then you will have done problem seven, eight, that one type twice in one day, and then you won't do it the next day. So you want to do both days. That's the key. You do it four or five times a week. You just keep going and going. You know, take a test and so on. And then you you keep re repeating it over and over. Um, there are also at the beginning of all these uh, problem sets what they call um, <clears throat> like warm ups. So make sure you do those. Those are mostly mental. And uh, you know, uh, do those. They're very helpful. They'll they'll save you a lot of time. My experience. I've been teaching uh, and tutoring math for over thirty years. And I've taught high school math for more than 20 years. And the number one problem you, you're going to have, if there are any, let's say challenge, you know. The number one challenge you're going to have with higher math is not going to be X's and Y's and formulas and all that stuff. The number one challenge you're going to have with math is sitting there going, oh, wait, I don't, I don't know what 7 plus 6 is. Uh, uh, 7 plus 6, uh, I mean, count, you know, that's going to slow you terribly down. And if somebody says to you, Five times eight, you need to say 58. I mean, oh wait, no, never mind. Okay, five times eight is, uh, uh, let's see, five, uh, you know, you just need to say 40. Or seven times nine, 63. Or uh, 15 minus seven, eight. That needs to be immediate. So what you're doing with these this year in Saxon 7.6 is getting that stuff out of the way and getting to where you're focusing more on the actual you know, math itself and not, oh, worrying about, you know, uh, my times tables or my pluses and minuses or whatever. I mean, you don't read books that way, right? You don't sit there and go, S okay, S, okay, S, I'm going to read this word here. S, I know it's, uh, I'm, uh, S says, um, oh, S, oh, S, okay, S, all right, S, okay, A, either says A or A, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's A, A, oh, wait, where did I go again? Wait, S, Wait, was it S says, you know, I mean, just you're going to go Saxon. That's what you did when you were a little kid, learn how to read, right? So you memorize the basics, you just memorize them. You don't have to be a genius about, gee, why does the letter A say A or A? You don't need a, like a, let me think about that philosophically. You just go A says A and you mush them all together and it says the word Saxon and then you go, oh, Saxon. Then you worry about, okay, what is this paragraph saying? Not 
hmm, let me think about what these letters are saying. So in the same way, you need to have those, fa those facts just memorized by the end of this year. So anyway, so we can get to the math and then in later years, you can go x squared plus a to the second, you know, plus 9a divided, you know, you don't have to worry about, wait a minute, uh, what's uh, seven plus five is, uh, uh, you know, whatever. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, um, you are getting older as a student. I don't know what, how old you are, but uh, part of homeschooling and, and this kind of thing is like taking on some extra responsibility. So as much as you can, watch these videos, rewind them, pause it, whatever, and kind of start shouldering some of this you know, responsibility yourself. You might have younger brothers and sisters. You wanna give mom and dad a break if you can and go, nah, I'm gonna figure this out, mom, I think I got it, or whatever. And if you need help, of course, mom and dad will be glad to help you, I'm sure. Um, but if not, you can always email me if you want, and I'll, I'll have an email address down there. But, um, you know, take responsibility for this, get this going, get these problem sets going yourself uh, each day, boom, boom, don't make mom, oh, it's time to do the you know, problem set. You just do it yourself. Knock it out, and you'll feel good the rest of the day. Saxon, if you've ever done it before, it's very, some people go, oh, it's very repetitive and boring. I don't know. I mean, you know, I've seen a lot of math books that have all this color stuff in it, and I was, like, very confused. But th that's what Saxon looks like. It's just black and white, no fancy stuff. You just get right to it, get out of there. So if you hate math, Saxon's perfect. If you love math, Saxon is perfect. So you'll do a great job this year, I'm sure. Okay, well, let's start off. And uh, lesson one is adding whole numbers and money. You should know, you don't have to write this down or anything, an add end is just like if you say three plus seven equals 37. Oh, wait, no, sorry, 10, okay. That's an add end, and that's an add end. And this is the sum. That's what those two add ends, you know, add, add together to make. Order of addition doesn't matter. That's called the commutative property. So it doesn't matter if you say three plus seven equals 10. Okay, you could reverse the order. Seven plus three also, also equals 10. Doesn't matter, you know, eight plus four equals 84. No, I don't, okay, 12, all right? So four plus eight is also equal to 12. So it doesn't matter what order you uh, add things in. Same thing with multiplication, we'll get to that later. All right, here's an example. 726 plus 93, you've probably seen this a million times before, let's just go over it. You write them and where you're Ones and tens and hundreds are all lined up. So six plus three is nine, two plus nine is 11. You put the one there and there we go. And that's eight, 19. Now check using the commutative property. Well, fine, we'll go 93 plus 726. And you go down, 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 you'll get the same exact thing, 819. There's your check. All right, here's another one. Let's take a look at this one. Add these three dollar amounts. Check using the commutative property. Well, okay, here we go. All we need to do is go 375, 1250, and then $9, it would just be 9 with no cents. So going straight down, 5 plus 0, 5. 7 plus 5 is 12, put the 2 there and the 1 there. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 9 is 15, put the 1 here, $25 and 25 cents. Now check using the commutative property. I won't bother to do this, but just, you know, whatever word that you want to add these in, put the nine up top, put the 1250 down here, put the 375 here, there, doesn't matter. Check it that way, it should work if you want to do that. All right, a couple things about subtracting. You should know when you have something like this, 10 minus seven is three. The minuend is that, the subtrahend, that's the uh, lower number that you're subtracting from the, high, the from the minuend. By the way, sub in Latin means under, that, that's under. Uh, the difference, that is a word that means the answer to a subtraction problem. So there we go. All right, let's do an example. Subtract this 93 from 726. And I'm sure you know the uh, method to doing this. Uh, 6 minus 3 is 3. 2 minus 9, you can't do it. So we're going to borrow from that. That's going to be 6, and it'll be 12 here. 12 minus 9 is 3, and then 6 minus nothing, 6. All right, the check. All you need to do is take these two and add them together and then you should get the same answer that you had when you started. So three plus three is six, nine plus three is 12, then there we go, and 726, and lo and behold, there we go. And everybody's happy, okay? Let's try another one. Ron was pretty strange. He spent $1.34 for a glass of water. He paid for it with a $5 bill. How much change should Ron get back? And we'll check it, okay? Well. Really quickly, you can either do this with go, oh, 5.001.3, you know. But if you don't like messing with the points, you know, the, the decimal at that this stage, 
you don't have to worry about it. Just put five, zero, zero, and one, three, four, and you're gonna subtract. <coughs> so, we're gonna look at this and go, okay, well, you can't take four from zero. I'm gonna borrow from the, oh, oh wait, there's nothing there. Okay, I'm gonna borrow from this, so that's gonna make that four, okay? Which will make this one there, that'll be a 10, okay? Now we can say, I'm gonna borrow one from the 10 and make that a nine and make that a 10. So 10 minus four is six, nine minus three is six, four minus one is three. Of course, we know the answer is 3.66 or $3.66. To check, all you need to do is put these two and add them together. There we go. Four plus six is 10. One plus three is four plus six is also 10. One plus one plus three is five. There you go, $5. That's what he started out with. Ron, our friend, okay. All right, a couple of other things we're gonna do before we finish up today. Inverse operations, that's just a, uh, a term that you need to know. The inverse is like the opposite. So the opposite or inverse of addition is subtraction. The opposite or the uh, uh, inverse of multiplication is division you know, and vice versa. Fact families, oh, isn't that cute? Only three kids in this family, come on. It's not a homeschool family. Homeschool family has about 17 kids. All their names begin with the letter J too, so. You've seen these probably before, fact families. And in fact, you should, when, you're, when your brain sees three plus seven, you should go 10 immediately, or seven plus three is 10. When you see 10 minus seven, your brain should tell you three immediately. 10 minus three is seven, immediate, should be immediate. So that's what a fact family is. If you add or you know subtract, those three, those three numbers kind of have to do with each other when it comes to addition or subtraction. You'll see tons of these this year. Uh, for the beginning of the year, when we get finished with them. All right, here's another one. Rearrange the numbers in the this addition fact to form another addition fact and two subtraction facts. Well, let's do the first, another addition fact first. Well, obviously, with the commutative property, it doesn't matter what order you add stuff in, you still get the same thing, right? So you could say six plus 17 is 23. That's an addition fact. Two subtraction facts, you could say 23 minus six is 17, or 23 minus 17 is six. There you go. That's an easy one to do in your, pro in your problem, in your book. Here's another one. Rearrange the numbers in a subtraction fact to form another subtraction fact and two addition facts. Well, if 11 minus four is seven, since they're in the same family, 11 minus seven is also four. And then of course the addition facts, four plus seven is 11, seven plus four is 11, and the whole ha uh, very happy family we have created there. All right. Try your practice set. You've got six problems, A through F. So go ahead and uh, pause this in a second. Go ahead and do F when you're, I mean, excuse me, A. Yeah, A is first, okay. Do A first, and then when you're finished with that, unpause it and check the answer. So pause it now. Okay, you're back. I'm assuming you paused it, all right? The answer to A is 5,458. That's what you got? Awesome. I'm assuming that's what you said. Okay, pause it and try B. All righty, B is $26.48. That's about a large coffee at Starbucks as well. All right, pause it and try C. All righty, C is 5,206. Pause it and try D. All right, D, $3.85, excuse me, 65 cents. Okay, that's a cup of water at Starbucks. All right, pause it and try E. All right, E, there are your facts. Six plus eight, 14, eight plus six, 14. 14 minus six, eight, 14 minus eight, six. All right, good. Last one, pause it and try F. Okay, F, there are your facts. That is it for today. We're on a great journey, a wondrous land of math and fun. Anyway. Get the entire problem set done today. Get it as quickly and accurately as you can. And we're gonna knock this stuff out this year and have a great time doing it. I will see you tomorrow. See ya.